right the first question is a very simple question based on bernoulli's equation and momentum equation right so they have given us a pipe right a pipe with an uniform uh, decreasing area right uh, there is a gradual decreasing in area at a certain place right so we have that's an uh piezometer right this is our center line right beyond this there is a decrease in area and here we have another meter right and this is the structure right so here this is point b and here it's point a the height here it's h a right and here the height is h b right this is from the center to this meniscus right so here the diameter is given as 5 cm here the diameter is given as 2.5 centimeter right it's diameters so i take d2 and this is d1 and the flow rate is given as one liters per second right uh right and they have said right the force applied on the pipe section is four newton in the direction of flow so force on the pipe section right force on the pipe section is 4 newton in the direction of flow right so uh, they have mentioned this right they are asking us to find uh, a relationship for h a minus h b right using bernoulli's equation right so we are going to apply bernoulli's equation for point a and point b right so we know what is bernoulli's equation right so from bernoulli's equation so fairly simple question like an a level question right so from there bernoulli's equation we know the energy at a right so total head at a should be equal to total head at b so they have mentioned there is no energy loss if there is energy loss we have to add that energy loss here right so in our case this is zero right so this part won't be there right so total head at a is our pressure head pa over rho g plus our elevation head is at a plus our velocity head pa squared over 2g this should be equal to pb over rho g plus is at b plus vb squared over 2g so i am considering this midline to be data so if this is datum, you know, is a day is equal to is a b that is zero. So simply we can neglect these two terms, right? And we know that pressure is liquid pressure is equal to h rho g, right? So p by rho g means the height h. So p a by rho g is given by h a plus p a squared by 2 g equal to here hb plus vb squared by 2g right so ha minus hb can be written as 1 over 2g times vb squared minus va squared right so now we don't know what is vb and va right so we have to find vb and va so here comes the trouble, right? So if there are any new syllabus students, so they most probably they won't be using a term called control volume, right? Mostly the all syllabus students, they know they will be using a term called control volume. So this red color portion, I have considered this as the control volume, right? CV, right? So control volume is a system of fluid particles, right? So typically, right, there are certain number of fluid particles within that control volume. So we are considering that as a, uh, a solid like thing, right? To make it easy, I'm saying like that, right? So here I'm going to apply conservation of mass, right? 
right? Conservation of mass. So if there is no any accumulation, right? Accumulation in the sense, if there is a tank uh, below here, so I'll draw it in another color. Right? If there is a tank or something, some something like here in the below, this is an accumulation, right? This water will be stored there. So if there is an accumulation, the mass in, mass in from this side, mass in, won't be equal to mass out because some are stored here. Right, so mass in would be equal to mass out plus this accumulation, but in our case there is no such accumulation, right? So we don't have any accumulation here, right? So mass rate, so m in simple m, not capital M, it's simple m. It should be equal to m out rate. So these are rates. If you keep a dot above, these are rates per unit time. So that can be written as Q in, right? Into rho density is equal to Q out into rho. This is flow rate into density is, will be given as mass rate, right? Mass flow rate. So here you can see that flow rate is constant, right? If flow rate is constant, again, we can write Q is equal to A into V, that is area into velocity, right? So since Q in and Q out are equal, you can write the area at A, right? At point A, the area is pi by 4 times 5 squared into velocity VA. Here at B, point B, right? Pi by 4 into 5 by 2 squared into VB, right? So VA Uh, is equal to VB by 4, right? So you know a ratio between VA and VB, right? And at the same time, right? So VA and VB are not given to us. Q is the data for us, right? So VA can be also written as Q by A. That is the area, right? So VA is equal to Q that is 1 liter, so 1 into 10 to the power inverse 3 over the area pi by 4 into centimeter, 5 centimeter, so 0 0.05 squared. So you can find VA here, right? So if you find VA, right, you can find VB from this equation, right? So if you know VA and VB, we can substitute that here, and we know the value for G 9.81 and find H A minus H B. Clear? Right. So when it comes to uh, Bernoulli's principle, define the datum properly, which is your datum, right? And uh, consider if there is any energy loss or not. Be careful with that. If there is energy loss, you have to add that energy loss to the appropriate side, right? Here the flow is from A to B. So if there is energy loss, definitely the total head that A should be higher and total head that B should be lower, then only the flow will be moving from one side to other, right? So the loss will be from A to B. So the lost part should be added to the uh, B side or else it should be subtracted from the A side, right? However, you have to include that energy if there is an energy loss, right? And uh, the other thing is if the datum is a uh, horizontal line and if you are an inclined pipe, uh, so be careful with ZA and ZB, these uh, elevation heads. So you have to add those elevation heads appropriately and do the question, right? It's a fairly simple calculation. Within one or two minutes, you can do this, right? So, uh, uh, we'll move to the next part, right? The conservation of momentum, right? So if you solve this idea, the solved value here is HA minus HB is equal to 198 uh, millimeters, right? So I have converted the answers to millimeters. In millimeters, it is 198, okay? So the next part. So then in the next part, uh, they are asked to apply principle of conservation of momentum for the control volume between A and B and obtain another relationship uh, for A and 
sorry, HA and HP, right? So the principle of uh, conservation of momentum, right? Uh, that is uh, for steady flows, right? So here we are using it for steady flow, right? The forces, right? Give me a second. Right. The forces on the CV, right? That is that considered red color portion, right? Is equal to M out, momentum out, rate of momentum out into rate of minus rate of momentum in, right? So here we have to apply for a particular direction, right? So here we are considering the forces on the CV, right? In the data, they have given us force on the pipe, right? Force on the pipe is four Newton in the direction of the flow. That means force on the CV is on the control volume. According to Newton's third law, it is equal and opposite reactions from Newton's third law, right? So some students might think uh, this is uh, similar to F equal M A. Yes, obviously this is similar to F equal M A, right? So typically F equal M A is applied for particles, right? Newton's second law is applied for particles, but fluid is a group of particles, right? It's entirely a massive uh, number of particles flowing through it. That's why we are considering a group of particles as a uh, something like similar to a solid and doing this calculation, right? So new students, syllabus students, if there are anyone, uh, don't worry about this highly. It's fairly similar to F equal MA, right? Uh, so if you mark the forces, I'll draw the diagram here. Just the outer diagram. So here the point A. Point B, right? So if we consider this portion, right? Here we will be having a pressure, right? Due to pressure, we will be having a force that is PA times the area, right? Here also there will be a pressure in this direction that is PB times the area, right? Other than that, we know from the tube, right? From the pipe, there is a pressure on the control volume that is this imaginary part we are considering that is four newton right so if we take all these things uh, to the left hand side of the equation so pa times pa times pi by 4 into 0 0.05 squared right minus 4 and minus pb times pi by 4 into 0 0.025 Square, right? Here, the rate of momentum, right? So the rate of momentum can be written as mass rate, rate of mass into velocity, right? Minus m dot into v a. Okay. So you know momentum, right? Just capital M is mass into velocity, right? We know M dot mass flow rate, sorry, momentum rate is M by T, right? So instead of M, capital M, we can write simple M by, simple M into V by T. So mass by T, that is mass rate into V, right? So that is the thing we are using here, right? So here, uh, P A right for instead of P A you can write H A rho G times pi by 4 into 0 0.05 squared minus I am taking this P B uh, term for the as a second term so H B into rho G into pi by 4 into 0 0.025 squared minus 4 equal to here your mass flow rate 
right? Mass flow rate can be written as flow rate, volume flow rate into density, right? Here VB minus VA, right? Already in the first part, right? In the previous part, we have found VB. We, we know what is VA, we know Q, we know Rho, except HA and HB, all other terms are known, right? So hereafter, you need to only just do a simple solving, right? So after solving, right, you will get the equation as 4HA minus HB equal to 936 mm, right? So this is the answer for the second part, right? So final third part is they are asking us to find HA and HB separately. So in the first part, we got an equation that is for the final part, C part, HA minus HB is 198 mm, right? In the second part, we have got 4HA minus HB is 936 mm. So simply solving simultaneous equation. Right. So of using the simultaneous equation, even you can use the Cal directly. Right. So HA is equal to 246 mm and HB is equal to 48 mm. Right. So this is the first part question in the last year paper. Fairly very simple, straightforward question. Right. Uh, any doubts here? You have to be the uh, most important points are these points when you are applying the momentum equation. You have to be careful with the direction, the force on the pipe, force by the pipe. There are different terms. If this can be, this force on the control volume can be also said as force by the pipe on the control volume, right? There are different terms. We have to read the question carefully. That's all. Right? If you find the direction and the force correctly, particularly the direction is much important. If you find the direction correctly, then you can handle the question easily. Right? Any issues? Right, nothing. So you are confident about the mass flow conservation of mass. So using conservation of mass only, we have derived the continuity equation. Then conservation of uh, momentum, right? And sometimes Bernoulli's equation will also, they will use a term as conservation of energy, right? So conservation of energy means it is Bernoulli's equation, right? So these three other things, I think you will get one question, uh, at least one question from these concepts, right? Okay. Uh, the second question, right? Uh, the second question, they are asking us to state Newton's law of viscosity as an equation and identify the variables in the equation, right? Uh, Newton has given so many equations, right? Newton's uh, laws of motion and uh, Newton's law of viscosity, and there is a Newton's law in uh, uh, lens when it comes to lens. Right, uh, there's a law from Newton and uh, uh, there's Newton's cooling's law and there are so many things when it comes to uh, Newton, right? So the law here is it's tau equal, right? It's tau equal, that is here stress is equal to dynamic viscosity into velocity gradient, right? So here tau is the shear stress 
right, between the fluid layers. So this is for viscous fluids. Mu is your dynamic viscosity, right? And uh, dV by dY. So this is gradient of velocity. Right. So similarly, uh, like uh, dynamic viscosity, there's another term, right, which is uh, uh, your kinematic viscosity. So nu, that is equal to mu by rho, right. So another thing you have to remember, right, uh, any term which is divided by the length, right, if it is divided by length, we typically use gradient, and if it is divided by time, we use rate, right. So these are the terms involved there, right? Uh, that is the first part. Uh, the second part, uh, what are the dimension and the SI unit of coefficient of dynamic viscosity? They are asking the SI unit and um, dimension of this mu, right? So usually we know the SI units of uh, stress, right? Stress is Newton's per meter squared, right? So Newton per meter squared. This side, the, we don't know the unit of mu. Here, it is ve velocity, that is meters per second by meter, distance. So meters and meters cancels out. The second, if the second comes to the other side, so it is Newton meter inverse one second, sorry, Newton meter inverse two second, or Pascal second, right? So this is the unit, right? So dimension of mu. So you can use this Newton meter inverse two part so for Newton, you know MLT inverse 2, and for meter inverse 2, it is L inverse 2, and for second, it's time. So ML inverse 1, T inverse 1, right? So fairly simple, first two parts, right? So I'll move on to the next one, right? The C part, the equation F equals 64 by R E Reynolds number, it's used for laminar flow in a pipe of a circular section. Show that the head loss between two points along the pipe is proportional to average velocity in the pipe under these conditions, right? So in a pipe, right, uh, you might have done these practicals. I don't know, all syllabus students uh, definitely did this energy loss in pipes. Uh, about new syllabus people, I don't know whether they have done the practical uh, that certain practical. So there is an equation for this. That is energy loss, frictional head loss, right, is equal to F. This is friction factor into length by diameter, average velocity squared over 2G, right? This is the equation. And in the meantime, they have given us that is F is equal to 64 by Reynolds number, RE. We know that Reynolds number is equal to V rho D by mu. Right. That is velocity into uh, density into diameter of the pipe over mu dynamic viscosity. Right. So we can substitute this in the first equation. Right. So HF is equal to 64 by RE. RE is V rho D over mu into L over D into V squared over 2G. Right. So if we simplify this, so we will get 32 right mu l over v and v cancels out for d g right rho d squared into g into v so if you see the terms within the brackets every terms are constant for a particular pipe right if you take a particular pipe every terms are constant so hf is proportional to v so frictional loss Head loss in a pipe is, if the flow is laminar, it is proportional to the velocity. So that is the thing they have asked us to prove, right? So in the next part, uh, they have asked us to sketch the uh, Moody's diagram and identify and define the variables of the two axes of the diagram and label the main section. So this is a direct theory part. So in Moody's diagram, there will be three axes, right? So this is the relative roughness part. Okay. Relative roughness. Here this is Reynolds number. Here it's your friction factor F, right? So there will be a straight line portion. 
right? It's your laminar flow portion, right? And there's another portion like this. This is curve. This is for rough turbulent. So rough turbulent flow, right? And similarly, there will be another portion here. This is smooth turbulent flow. So the middle will be your transition zone. Right. So this is, this is fairly from your theory, right? Uh, the last part. So water flows in a long uniform pipeline of diameter D, right? So if it is a pipeline, so you can assume at most of the time it will be laminar flow, right? The head loss between two points spaced at distance L apart is found to be H, right? So the head loss, the frictional head loss is given as H, length simple length is given as capital L, diameter is D, right? The density of the water is rho, rho is equal to rho, and the dynamic viscosity, all are the standard notations, mu is equal to mu. Explain how would you use these values and the Moody's diagram to calculate the discharge in the pipeline, right? So they're asking us to calculate the discharge right so we know that hf is equal to f o f into l over d times uh, v squared over 2g right so if we somewhat if we find v right if we can find v right using q v equal a v right we can find the discharge right so the concept is to find v so if you want to find V, we know HF, that is the frictional head loss, we know length, we know diameter, right? So if we somewhat can find F, right? Uh, we can, right, we can move to the equation, right? So here, right? So assuming the flow as lamina, we did arrive to this equation. Right. So since it is a pipeline, this would be laminar flow. Okay. If you observe this equation properly, you know HF, right? I'll write in a different ink. We know HF, right? We know mu, right? We know L. Rho is known, right? Diameter, we know. Obviously, G is constant, we know, right? Except for this V, we know every other parts, right? Every other terms involved. So we can find V, right? So if we know V, you can go to the discharge, right? So some might think, uh, uh, where did we use the Moody's diagram in this? So actually the, this line, there is a line here, right? So this line has an equation that is, that equation is F equals 64 by RE, right? So we are using that 10 deriving this equation. Right. So you have to write in terms, in uh, words. So from this equation, we have to derive this equation. After deriving this, we can find V. After finding V, we can go to Q, the discharge. Right. Okay. Anybody have any issues? I think the new syllabus people also have this type of questions involving frictional head losses. Right, so the next thing I know definitely the new syllabus people also have the next question, right? So I'll just draw the structure quickly. So the different thing is we use a different term. The old syllabus people we use like total head uh, velocity head and uh, elevation head, so so and so. But the new syllabus people, they are using EGL and HGL, the energy grade line and hydraulic grade line. But the concept are same, right? Here there is a, sorry. There's a pipe, 
this is by seeing so much like this and it is horizontal for a certain time and suddenly there is a decrease in area for a short period of time and again the area increases to the same value right and it drops after here right something like this right so here this is one meter and here also this is one meter this is the water level so it is three meter so these are some points are given as o here it is a b c d e and f right so the first question is um, explain why this flow can be assumed to be steady right so if you measure the discharge for the certain time and if the discharge is a constant right so then you can assume that the flow is steady right uh, and other data is this bigger pipes diameter is two meet two centimeter and the smaller pipes diameter is one centimeter right these are given to us right so the question is to draw the graphs for every head right that is total head velocity head and pressure head elevation head for all the four heads we have to draw the graph from each point right so we'll try to draw the graph for total head right for total head so this is o a so b so i'm just marking the locations c i d e and f so this is my data this line right so so this is a very large tank, right? They have said this is a very large tank when compared to the pipe. So if it is a very large tank, the velocity of this point O would be nearly zero, right? So if the velocity is zero at O, the elevation is three, right? So we are taking the atmospheric pressure as zero here. So there is no any pressure heads. So the total head at point O is three. So this is three at at O. Right. So since the flow is steady, right? So the, there is no any friction loss. They have not spoken about any friction losses. So the graph is a straight line. Right. So everywhere the value is three. So for these kind of questions you can directly draw the total head most of the times you can draw the total head if there is any friction loss you have to consider that right and after drawing the total head graph we can directly draw the elevation head right because those two are mainly straightforward so we can draw those two Right. So for point O, the elevation is three meter. Right. For point A, elevation is zero. Right. So point B, elevation is one meter. Here also one meter. For D, also it's one meter. E again one meter. For F, it is minus one meter. So this is fairly straightforward. Right. So next we are going to draw the velocity and the pressure, pressure heads, right? 
So to draw the velocity head, we have to find uh, what would be the velocity, right? So you can use uh, Bernoulli's principle from point O to point F, right? So total head at point O should be equal to total head at point F. At point O, there is no any atmospheric pressure, so zero. Uh, the elevation is three, right? And the velocity at point O is zero, right? And at point F, the pressure head is again zero, open to atmosphere. Elevation is minus one and uh, the velocity is v, so v squared by 2g. Okay. So if we take to minus 1, here it's 4 equal v squared by 2g, so velocity is equal to square root of 8g. Right? So now we know the velocity along the pipes. Right? But here, between c and d, there is a change in diameter. Right? So the diameter is reduced by 2 times. We know there is no any accumulation between C and D. So according to conservation of mass, we can write A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2, right? So let's take the velocity here as V1 and velocity here as V2, right? So now we know V1, right? V1 is root of 8G. We have to find V2. So what is the area at V1 at that location? That is pi by 4 into 2 squared into V1 is equal to here pi by 4 into 1 squared into v2, right? So v1, v2 is equal to 4 times v1. So whenever the diameter is reduced by half, right? The ve velocity increases by its squared, right? Here it is, so that in easy terms, velocity is reduced by 2 times. So, sorry, the diameter is reduced by 2 times. So the velocity will increase by 4 times. So the V2 would be equal to 4 times of V1. So V2 is equal to square root 4 times square root of 8G. Right? So you can directly find that easily. So now you know every velocities. Right? So here velocity head. Right? Here our distances, x is the distance, right? So here point O, right? Point A, D, D, E, and F, right? So at point O, we already discussed at point O, velocity is zero. Suddenly at point A, we are getting a value of root of 8G. Right here, we are getting a value of root of a g, which will be following up to point c. Right at point c, if you can see, there is a sudden decrease. That is not a gradual decrease; it is a sudden decrease in area. So there will be a sudden increase in velocity also. So there will be a sudden increase. So this is four times root of a g. Here is this value is root of a g. Right. And this will continue up to D and again it will drop back to the initial value of root of AG and continue on to last two points. So this would be the graph of velocity, but you can't say about this variation, right? You can't say about this variation at this time, right? I'll say that why we'll draw the pressure also, then you can uh, come to an idea, right? So when it comes to pressure head, right? Last, so at pressure head is always drawn last, mostly it comes last. So if e, again, I mark the points quickly, D, yes, E. Right, so we know the total head, we know the elevation head, we know the velocity head. So pressure head is total head minus velocity head and elevation head. Right. In the first case, total head is three. So if three minus three, that is elevation head, three minus three is zero minus zero. So again, zero. Right. You have to do some simple, straightforward calculation at a. This is zero. Right. So if it comes to point b. 3 minus square root of 8g, right? 
so if it is 3 minus square root of 8 g so we will just quickly calculate what is square root of 8 into g right it is somewhat very much closer to 9 right it's 8.9 somewhat around 9 so i'll just assume it as 9 so here this would be 36 so this is somewhat 9 so this is 36 right so here if we take the total head at point A, point A, the total head is 3, the velocity head is, sorry, elevation head is 0, velocity head is 9, so the pressure head would be minus 6, right? So minus 6 here. So I'll just mark here, this is minus 6, right? So the next point. At the next point, pressure head is total head is again 3, minus 1, the elevation head is 1, so 2, 2 minus 9, so minus 7. So it drops down, right? Here it's minus 7, right? Again, it would be same value, minus 7, right? Right? So suddenly when it passes point C, right? The velocity head goes to 36. So what would be the pressure head? So 3 minus total head doesn't change. 3 minus 1, that is 2. 2 minus 36, that is minus 34. Suddenly the pressure head in, uh, in increases in negative direction to 34. Right. So here we can draw these things. Right. Here it is a straight line. Right. Here again a straight horizontal line. Here it suddenly decreases, and there is no change here. Right, so again 34, right? So point D, when it comes to the larger pipe, right, same as point C, when it comes to the larger pipe, it will attain the same value. You can do the calculation also. 3 minus 1, it is 2. 2 minus this approximately 9. Here this is approximately 9. So 2 minus 9 is minus 7, right? So it is minus 7. Again, it will come to the initial value. Right. Then if you go to point E, it is also in the same level. So again, it is minus 7. Right. So finally, point F will definitely differ because the elevation it is different. Right. So 3 minus minus 1. Here the total head is 3. So 3 minus minus 1 means 4. 4 minus 9 is minus 5. Right. Here it is minus 6. So somewhat above than that. So minus 5. So here we have somewhat completed the entire question except this OA part, right? So you have to think here, right? So when the fluid particle move from O to A, right? And when it comes to O to A, this, this level, water level will very slowly decrease. You can, it is the velocity would be nearly zero. After a certain point, when the fluid particle comes closer and closer to point A, the velocity will start to increase and abruptly, it's very suddenly it will go to the value of 9, this value, right? So what happens at the initial stages, the velocity will be 0, right? When it comes closer and closer to A, it will start to increase and when it comes to very close to A, it will go and reaches that 9 value. So it will be not a straight line, it will be a curve, right? So now the pressure head comes to play, right? So if you see the graph, right, I'll use a different color, right? Until this point, right, until this point, there is no velocity, right? We know the pressure total head is always constant, right? So up to here, the pressure head is sorry, the elevation head is linearly decreasing. So to keep the pressure uh, total head constant, if one parameter decreases linearly, the other parameter also should increase linearly. So here the pressure head should increase linearly until this point. After this, there is a chaotic variation. Chaotic in the sense it is not a linear variation. It is a non-linear variation. So the graph becomes non-linear, right? So still 
the velocity sorry elevation decreases and to compensate that the velo uh, velocity start to increase and here if you see right the pressure head has gone to minus 6 so here initially it has de increased in a straight line then all of a sudden it's down to minus 6 so that means the graph should be somewhat like this okay so you have to be careful when drawing this oa portion right this is the most critical portion right so other than that everything can be drawn so when it comes to the oa oa portion you can draw the elevation that is not an issue right here the point to be considered is the particle you are considering it will slowly move down at a very slow you know velocity it's nearly zero once it the level comes to a certain range we don't know what is that value right at a certain point the velocity will start to increase in a non-linear manner right you can't say that is linearly increasing right right in a non-linear manner and it will reach the velocity of uh, v1 right so that's why we the graph is in this shape so it is zero for a certain time then suddenly it reaches uh, square root of 8g that is 9 right so until that zero velocity thing until this point right the elevation is decreasing linearly elevation is decreasing linearly so to counter that the pressure would increase linearly so after that the variations are non-linear right we know at point a the pressure head is minus six so all of a sudden this will take a curve path and it will come to minus six value so within this portion this is a linear variation this is linear so here this is not linear so the only linear part is up to here here this is zero right here it is zero here there is a value right this is not linear this is non-linear variation right i hope uh, you would have understood this right so the next is they are asking the discharge obviously you know the velocity right so velocity at v1 is known so discharge can be q can be given as pi by 4 into 0 0.02 squared into v1 right so this is the discharge and they are asking the lowest pressure right the lowest pressure is obtained at point c and point d within that small thinner pipe that is minus 34 that is the pressure head is minus 34 so the lowest pressure is right so this is 34 times 10 to the power 3 that is h rho g into 9.81 so this would be a lowest pressure right so these two parts are not an issue right any any questions Anyone, if you have any questions, you can ask in this particular thing. Right, so then seems like no issues. So next uh, thing is your hydrograph, right? Give me a second. Right, so when it comes to hydrograph, right? There are a few theory and right. So they are asking the catchment area. What is the catchment area? They has, they have given a particular uh, <coughs> set of long question, right? You can read that. Right. So the catchment area is the considered area, right? So the area which we are going to consider that means the rainfall collection area, right? So that is the catchment area, right? 
So next is your runoff coefficient. Runoff coefficient is the total volume of discharge by the total volume of rain, right? So simple, straightforward, two th theories, right? So runoff coefficient. So that is your total volume of discharge. Over total volume of rain. Okay. So mostly it would be less than one. Right. Uh, so the next thing is they are asking us to sketch the hydrograph and mark the peak flow and the base flow. Right. So if you take a discharge versus time graph, right, a fairly simple graph. Right. So this would be your base flow, that is QB. Right. This is your peak flow. The flow at that particular point. This is your peak flow. The time at which you get the peak discharge is your peak time, right? So here this is peak flow. This is your base flow. Right? And this is your peak time. They are just asking you to mark these things. Right? So the Question calculation part comes now, right? So calculate the total volume of precipitation in this catchment due to this storm, right? They have given us a detail, right? A storm detail, right? Uh, so many areas of Colombo are drained by the canal that passes the Open University. The catchment area of the canal at Narahin Peter is approximately 75 kilometers squared, right? So the catchment area is given as 75 kilometers squared, right? A heavy storm causes a rainfall of 150 millimeter over Colombo in four hours, right? Uh, beginning at uh, 600 or 600 on the 1st of September, right? So the intensity is given to us, rain intensity is given as 150 mm, right? So how? Using these details, how can you find the rainfall, right? So total volume of precipitation means your rainfall, right? So rainfall is your intensity 150 mm. So I'm con converting it to meter, right? Times your catchment area. Again, I'm converting this to meter squared into 10 to the power 6, right? So this is mm, around 11.25 into 10 to the power 6 meter cubes, right? This is the volume of precipitation, the rainfall, total rainfall, right? So the next thing, assuming an average runoff coefficient of 0.85 for this catchment, calculate the peak discharge in the canal, right? They're asking us to calculate the peak discharge. They're asking us to find this QP, right? So if we need QP, we need the volume of uh, discharge in the canal, right? So Volume flown in the canal would be, so that is the runoff volume. Runoff volume would be the runoff coefficient into total volume of precipitation. That is your rainfall. So here this is 9.563 into 10 to the power 6 meter cubes. So we have now the runoff volume, right? So the time, the other thing we have to include is the data given to us, right? Let's see what is the data. Right? A heavy storm start uh, starts right uh, at 600 on 1st of September. Right at 0600 on 1st of September, the rainfall starts. Right here, the rainfall starting. Mm, due to this rainfall, the discharge in the canal are varied linearly from one meter cube. Right. So at 0600, right. The discharge in the canal is one meter cubes per second, right? To a maximum value at 1200, right? So at 1200, it is peak. So it, they have said that's maximum QP. The discharge is then linearly decreased to 50 percentage of its maximum by 2400, right? So at 2400, and so these are clock times, right? At 2400, this is QP by 2. They have it is linearly decreased by uh, 250%. It's linearly decreased 
250 percentage, right? So the value now is 50 percentage of the initial value, that is a peak value, right? Uh, on the 1st of September, and then decreased linearly back to one meter cube by 2400 on the 3rd, right? So after 66 hours of the storm started, right? So at 2400 on 3rd, Right. On third, these are happening on first of September. So this is on third of September. It again comes back to one meter cube. Right, one meter cubes per second. Right. So that is after 66 hours of the rainfall. Right. So <coughs> here after rainfall starts. Right. Uh, this is from six hours. Right. This is from six hours. This is 12 hours. Right. This is um, after 24 hours, and this is after 66 hours, right? So the graph is from zero. We are going to draw the graph from zero, right? So zero means I'm removing the six hours part, right? So only for the discharge in the canal due to that rainfall only, right? I'm considering that part only. So here this starts from one, and linearly increases to QP, right? So the time taken for this is six hours, right? Then again, after some 60 hours time, right? 60 hours time, it comes back to the same value. So these are in hours, right? 60 hours, it comes. Right? So uh, after 18 hours, Right, we see after 18 hours. So this value is. QP by 2. Right, so these are the data. So I have just drawn the hydrograph, right? So now you can calculate the volume of this hydrograph, this entire volume. Right. So this would be equal to the discharge. Right. Simple as that, right? So that you can uh, take this as uh, two areas, right? Either two areas. So we don't know whether this variation is differ. So better to take it as three areas, right? So this is area one, this is area two, and this is area three, right? So if we write the equations for area one, Right, that is half times. It is a trapezium, so half times QP plus one. Right, so QP plus one times the height six. Right, even if you start the graph from zero, when you're considering this, this you have to consider only this length. So this six won't get uh, any trouble. You will get the correct value. Right, so plus the second one, so half into QP plus QP by two into twelve. Right plus half into QP by 2 plus 1 into here the value is 42, right? Times 42. So this is equal to 9.563 into 10 to the power 6. So when you solve, you can find QP, right? Only unknown is QP. So QP is approximately 117 meter cubes per second, right? Fairly simple question, right? OK, uh, got it. The next part is a, um, it's a theoretical struggle, right? Uh, the thing is, if the storm takes place 10 years in the future, in 2023, what differences would you uh, expect, right, to see in the flood graph? Explain your answer with a sketch, right? So there can be two arguments, right? Uh, one is, uh, you can argue that the soil would be saturated and the peak dis discharge would be higher. That can be a one argument. And another argument can be the soil would be dry and the peak discharge would be less. Right? Both can be argued. Right? So if someone argues that the soil is wet, it's saturated, so the graph, our current, if the current graph is like this, the new graph would be someone like this. So since it is wet, 
right if someone argues that the soil would be much drier if the current graph is in this manner the new graph would be much lower in the dry state right so if you draw this diagram you have to argue for that diagram if you draw this diagram you have to argue for this diagram right so we can't say right after 10 years we can't predict what will happen right you can't say whether it would be raining or it would be a dry season you can't say right we can predict the geological changes so according to the graph you are drawing you have to argue that right so if it is in wet so then the soil is soil is saturated so the discharge would be higher there won't be any seepage into the soil so it would be higher discharge uh, if it is in the dry case uh, vice versa so it will move into the soil and the peak discharge would be decreasing and so and so you have to argue like that right any issues in this part right uh, the question number 5 the next question is purely based on your laboratory practical flow measurement practical right so you have to say what are you doing what is calibration and all calibration is means calculating and finding a coefficient for the instrument measuring instrument to provide the exact value the actual value right uh, so they are asking us to uh, write the procedures and uh, uh why the coefficient of discharge is uh, less than 1 in uh, uh, venturi meter and all right so i'll just do the last part right if you have any issues can you please ask you can ask right anyone in issues seems like everyone are well prepared then i hope right so in a venturi meter right so you all know right uh, the venturi meter concepts so simple diagram of venturi meter there will be a gradual decrease in area there will be a smaller diameter here and there will be again a manometer fixed and the diameter would increase to the same value again right something like this right this would be same right consider that this is horizontal right so i am taking a point a here and another point b here the height as h b and the height as h a right and um, we are considering that there is no any energy loss and so and we apply bernoulli's principle right so here the velocity is v a the discharge is q the velocity is v a and here the velocity is v b something like that here the diameter is da and db or the area you can take the area as a a and a b or a1 and a2 so whatever it is right uh, so from uh, uh, conservation of uh, energy that is bernoulli's principle you can write pa over rho g plus is it day plus v a squared over 2g right is equal to here pb over rho g plus is it b plus v b squared over 2g right so we are taking this a b line the center line as datum so is it day is zero and is it b is zero so p a over rho g can be written as h a plus v a squared over 2g it is equal to here p h b plus v b squared over 2g right so h a minus h b right this can be written as 1 over 2g into 
uh, v b squared minus v a squared. So I'm writing v b squared as q over a two squared minus q over a one squared. So v one can be written as q over a one. Right? So we can take q squared out. So h a minus h b is equal to q squared over two g into one over a two squared minus one over a one squared. So from this you can find Q. So this is Q theoretical, right? So Q theoretical, Q T. Q theoretical is equal to square root of 2G into 2G into H A minus H B over 1 over A2 squared minus 1 over A1 squared. So, what is actual here? Q actual. Q actual is that is coefficient of discharge into Q theoretical, right? So Q A by Q T is equal to C D, right? So due to the frictional losses and the assumptions we are taking, right? Frictional loss and the, due to this assumption. Right, we are neglecting some portions, right? So obviously we know Q A is less than Q T, right? So Q A by Q T is less than one. So that means C D is always less than one. So this is the thing they have asked you to prove. So you have to just prove this equation and write down this argument, right? So fairly simple part there right so other than that uh, the calibration thing and uh, those things are uh, you know that so the calibrating a venturi meter means you have to measure these ha and hb from the meter venturi meter and find the theoretical discharge and you have to find the actual discharge in some other way right so typically we used to collect a certain um, certain amount of volume in a certain time and we know Q T from this equation. We know Q A from another method. So Q A by Q T will give you the calibration constant. That is your coefficient of discharge, right? That would be the uh, calibrating process, right? So when you are calculating the actual velocity, right? You have to include that C D part in front of this entire square root part. You have to uh, put the C D also. You have to multiply by C D. That's all. Right. So that is the question there. Yeah. So I hope you know what are the laboratory procedures and all you can write down. Right. Uh, the question number six is again based on a, a lab practical that is impact of jet. Right. I know that uh, both the old syllabus and new syllabus people have this practical right so they are asking us to derive the equation for the uh, force exerted by the jet on the target right so it's a fairly simple calculation they have given a diagram so this is that target and this angle is given to us as theta right so i am going to apply conservation of momentum in the upward direction right cv right it's equal to m out minus m in right so what are the forces right so i am considering the force on the cv right the force on the cv from the target as f right so here f is positive that is equal to we know this can be written as right the out velocity actually the well the out is in this direction right we are neglecting the uh, frictional losses so the velocity inlet velocity is v and the outlet velocity is also v in the same direction what is the change in angle right the change in the direction is 180 minus theta right not this theta the change is 180 minus theta so here you have to write rho q into velocity that is v cos 180 minus theta here minus rho q into v that is our inlet velocity right 
So again, F is equal to here minus, so cos 180 minus theta is minus cos theta. So rho Q into, for velocity I'm writing Q by A, area A is the area of jet area, right? Uh, into cos theta minus rho Q into Q by A. So here F in the upward direction, right? I'm changing the, sorry, in the downward direction, right? So the minus will become positive, rho Q squared by A into one plus cos theta. A fairly simple calculation part you would have done this, right? Uh, and the second thing they are asking us about the assumptions, right? Assumptions we are neglecting the weight of the uh, neglecting the weight of the CV, right? We are neglecting friction, right? So you have to point out those things. We are assuming it has steady flow, right? Assuming a steady flow, right? So you have to mention now uh, when applying this, you have to mention that you have applied for steady flow and all, right? And uh, the final part is uh, they are asking the effect of all these assumptions, right? So obviously, this is entirely based on your lab practical, right? So if you have your lab, lab reports, you can find the answers for these from your lab reports, right? Uh, those are the things which I thought uh, mainly. And the final question is based on your open channel flow, right? Uh, they are asking you to draw the open channel and uh, write down the procedures and the instruments and the conditions, the uniform flow and uh, the steady flow, right? Uh, that is entirely your practical, your open channel flow. I think uh, all syllabus students did do open channel. I don't know about new syllabus people, but uh, be prepared with the open channel. You will get that in your higher levels also in mechanics of fluid. You will definitely get a open channel practical, which is a very big practical. So it's very important to get prepared with open channel. Uh, if new syllabus students, don't worry. If you don't have now, at least after exams, you have to prepare that well. Uh, all syllabus people, they know obviously they have uh, open channel, right? So these are the things which I thought to cover from this paper.